Hey everyone, sadly it's Bradley. And I got something that's not so sad at all. Maybe. I'm not sure. So about a week ago, there was a Singaporean company that announced a brand new VR headset for later next year. May to be exact. And I kind of dismissed it because a lot of the claims seemed a little strange for a company that no one's ever heard of and it's just some random startup. So I didn't make a video on it. Until now. The only reason I changed my mind about doing a video is there's actually some news talking about it. Uh, there was a bunch of people that reached out to Valve because the company, DECA themselves, have stated that they've been collaborating with Valve to work on this headset you're seeing behind me right now. Valve, despite usually being a very silent character in things of everything, actually answered someone and they said while they don't actually have the product in their hands, there actually been a lot of back and forth in making sure that this headset will work correctly with SteamVR when it releases. Which, whether this headset is actually as good as all the things say about it, kind of shows it might actually be real. So since we at least got Valve to at least mention it or claim that they have in some sort of way collaborated with DECA, now I'm going to talk about it because... You know, I didn't want people to give their credit card information if they're interested to a company that has no backing, I don't know. But now, yeah, let's talk about this headset. So this headset is actually not a standalone headset, but a PC VR headset itself with an inside-out four-camera solution. So it's not really like a competitor to the Quest 2, which really nothing is right now, but hopefully there will be soon. It's more of a competitor to actually the HP Reverb, which it kind of shows that because the display on this thing Seems to be the exact same resolution as the HP Reverb, which is crazy because it's cheaper. Let's talk about some of the gimmicks that this headset has that might actually make you more interested into it if it is real and blah blah blah. DECA Gear 1, built with VR Chat, Pavlov VR, Star Trek Bridge Crew, and other multiplayer games in mind. With technologies as facial tracking, pressure sensitive controllers with all finger tracking, and hip based navigation, you get a deeper presence in VR and a wider range of expressiveness when playing with others. First batch shipping in May 2021, price is $449 US dollars. So their biggest feature is they're saying if you like VR chat or anything social VR, this will be amazing for you. For one thing, two global shutter infrared cameras cover your face from within and outside the headset to track more than 50 muscle movements delivering amazing expressiveness and making your VA experiments way more personal. So basically one camera will be pointing to your eye and above your nose to see what your eyes and your eyebrows give expressions. And the lower one will kind of track all your, your, your dimples or your mouth or your chin and all that stuff to give a more accurate instead of off and on puppet kind of view in VR social games. However, something like this, I would kind of think you need to implement into an SDK of some sort for the game to get it to actually work. However, I have linked the video to their actual demo of this uh, technology apparently in action. And if you're interested in that, maybe you see VR as a VR chat machine, which a lot of people actually do. You may be interested in this, so check out that video. And here's a clip of it, just kind of giving you a preview. So while that feature is cool, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't play VR chat because I have social anxiety that transcends reality as well. One thing that is very interesting to note about this uh, feature, and they show it off very clearly on their website, kind of a stab in the jab for Facebook. Faceflow equals privacy. Ooh. The DECA Faceflow analyzes your face locally on device 60 times per second using two infrared cameras. On each frame, the system captures an image of your face and input it to a multi-head CNN, which is a convolutional neural network, kind of like AI, to detect facial features. These facial features are converted to blend shapes values and the image is deleted immediately. Nothing leaves your PC or gets backed up to our servers. So that means none of your facial whatever is being sold to some random third party you don't know. I like that. I like that a lot. It's pretty weird how we can apparently trust a random Singaporean company that's never done anything with VR and we're putting cameras on our face and inside our room and we can trust them with our data apparently more than Facebook. That is 
That is depressing. <laughs> this next feature I'm about to talk about is actually more interesting to me personally than the actual face tracking stuff. This feature is called Deca Move. It's just got a whole lot easier to maneuver in VR. So I'm not gonna read off what this feature is because it's kind of confusing for people to understand. The feature is hip based movement is what they say. So in most VR games, there's usually two options with how you can move. Basically, you put this on your face and whatever direction you're looking, and if there's an analog or joystick mo movement, you can choose to have wherever your head is looking uh, be the orientation. So let's say you're walking straight, you press all the way up on the joystick, wherever you're looking, you're gonna go straight. I don't like this method, I prefer the other method we'll get into in a moment, but that's how that is. The other method is usually joystick based movement. So it's similar to uh, what I just said about the headset, but it actually depends on where your hand is pointing. And if you're pointing all the way up in the joystick, then if, you're, if your hand's pointing that way, you'll go that way. But if you move to the left, you'll go that way. I use this more because that's the better option for me, mostly because think about it. If you are actually going where you're looking, let's say an enemy is chasing you in VR. Well, you can't like really keep moving without shooting behind you. So I prefer this method so I can actually look around my play space uh, entirely. And that's why I use that method. Even though it feels really awkward because you kind of T-pose all the time when you're doing those kind of situations. This method is basically they have a little device that you clip on to your belt. And wherever that is pointing is actually where the joystick movement would actually have you go. So that way you can keep your body and head completely separate as well as your hands and get the full control of where you want to go. I like this feature. I think this feature is a fantastic idea. Whether it actually works or needs to be implemented uh, by developers to actually work correctly will probably be the case, but I love this. I love this feature a lot. I think it can solve a lot of my issues I have with immersion and movement systems since we have completely transitioned to mostly a joystick movement industry. Now this is where I question things a little bit. Uh, they advertise a controller. You can see here, it basically looks like Frankenstein uh, made love with a Oculus controller and a Valve Knuckles controller. And they basically say it's kind of the similar tracking to a Valve Index controller. It has the five finger capacitive touch. But I'm not really sure. When I look at all these pictures and photographs, it kind of looks more like maybe the finger tracking of the Oculus Touch controller where it's not really the actual like slow values. It seems more like an off and on based on if your finger is over a button or on the actual wrist again. So I'm guessing the finger tracking is more like this, but it has the actual strap that keeps your hand strapped to the device so you don't have to actually keep holding in. I, I, I always miss that when I use this thing. Uh, the knuckles, just strapping on your controller feels so nice after long periods of VR. But uh, that's built into the controller itself, so that is already a pretty good plus. But again, we'll see. Um, I just don't think it's going to be as accurate as the Knuckles controllers, especially at the price. I mean, how? Again, display. Uh, it's 2160 by 2160 per eye. Uh, 90 hertz refresh rate. Just very similar to the panel used in the HP Reverb. Uh, not much else to be said about that. Um, if it's using the exact same panel, then wow. Wow. Yeah, display, good. Displays are upgrading every year and every month it feels like. It's good to see. Again, uses four cameras similar to the Oculus Quest 2 on each corner uh, to kind of figure out where you are in the play space. Might be good, might be bad, I don't know. The old Windows Mixed Reality tracking was a little rough, but uh, it seems like manufacturers are starting to get more into figuring out the software solutions and make these sort of camera inside out four camera solutions a bit better in today's day and age. But we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Now here's another feature that a lot of people are questioning because it seems kind of too good to be true. One of those too good to be true. Um, play wirelessly on your deck of gear one. This is not talking about standalone, first of all. This is a attachment, a battery attachment that gives you 7,000 milliamp hours. So probably about an hour, I would guess, of actual gameplay that connects on the back of your strap of this headset to also give the weight distribution, but it also allows you to connect to your computer wirelessly for wireless VR, similar to the HTC uh, Vive wire wireless connection kit. I doubt it's 
as good as that. I'm feeling like it might be like some sort of weird access point for Wi-Fi 6 or something. That sounds more accurate to me because they're only selling this attachment. That is both the battery and the wireless for $50. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to buy it, see how it is because I want to review it for everyone. But, yeah, I'm not sure. And again... Steam VR support right outside the yin yang and Valve is actually confirmed that they are working on that. So anyway, that is the Deca Gear headset, a very interesting and hopefully real thing. I want this to be real. I want this to actually be a pretty good headset. The fact that a, a freaking developer that we've never heard of from Singapore or any other company is able to do this, release a headset with really enticing specifications, honestly, Makes me feel a lot better. Uh, I've been working on my Quest 2 review, and that's been the hardest thing I have because my morals and my like for the hardware of that headset have been just beating each other up over and over, and I had so much anxiety. But seeing a company like this that actually advertises that they will not store your facial data and all this other stuff to their servers or anywhere else, even on your local computer, VR might be in a much better place than I was kind of feeling. Maybe I was being a little bit too much of a doomer in my brain, but I'm very excited. I pre-ordered one. I don't really recommend anyone else pre-order one yet because it's still there's still a lot of questions that need to be answered. Um, but at least when this comes out next year, maybe <laughs> I will be able to show it off and give my honest review to everyone that's interested in it. And it's uh, caught my attention at this point. So I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe, like the video, comment on what you think about the headset. That's it. See ya.